Okay, so with the first uh, video that we did about uh, controlling the position and the weight bearing force uh, during exercise and your activities of daily living, uh, we talked about four forces, uh, four position forces that you need to control flexion, extension, side bending, and rotation, and then we needed to control axial loading uh, in order to control the stresses on your passive body structure uh, while you're exercising and while you're conducting your activities of daily living in order to minimize the stress on your structure. In the end, you need to see that there are variables that will influence the challenge of an exercise so that you don't do the exercises from memory, but you use the exercises again to create a changing variety of forces so that you learn to anticipate, prepare for, and control a wide variety of of activities or forces that could come at you because life is variable. So we're gonna do a good job of teaching you or preparing you to minimize the stress on your body during life. You need to be able to recognize and play with these variables. So she's gonna place her hands on the middle of the ball as she compresses her hands against her thighs. Then she needs to notice which way her back wants to migrate naturally. If she compressed the ball between her hands or her thighs and she didn't elicit any contraction of her trunk muscles, in this case her abdominal muscles, the ball would push back against her hands, her rib cage would flare, her back would arch up into some extension. So if she did nothing, the primary danger or force that would influence the, the stress on her back would be extension. But many people, when they compress the ball against their thighs, then they elicit a strong contraction of their abdominals. And when they elicit a strong contraction of their abdominals, then their pelvis can come closer in the front and their back flattens to the ground naturally. And so the first lesson is this, is that with most moderately vigorous forces, you really need to have a co-contraction of all three muscle groups, your stomach, your butt, and your back, in this case, your stomach and your back muscles one muscle group to fight the primary force, in this case your abdominals to stop your back from arching into extension, but then you need your back muscles to kick in appropriately in order to match the force of your stomach muscles so that there is a co-contraction and the back is maintained in a mid-range. If the force is only moderately vigorous and the primary stabilizing muscle group kicks in too strongly, it will move your back too far in the other direction and apply stress. It would be similar to if I had a, a cable tied onto my arm and the cable pulled and I did nothing, my elbow would straighten. If I overpowered the force of the cable, my elbow would bend, but I should be able to have the appropriate amount of bicep and tricep action so I can master the force and no movement in the joint. So as she prepares to compress the ball between her hands and her thighs, she's gonna adjust the position between her hip and her pelvis and her back, finding the most comfortable position. She'll notice where her back is either, her pelvis, her back, and her ribs are either touching or not touching the floor. Her goal is to maintain that relationship the same as she compresses the ball between her hands and her thighs, feeling that yes, indeed, she's getting abdominal muscles and her back muscles to kick in simultaneously. So the back is surrounded by a sea of muscles working instead of no muscles at all, or one muscle group working excessively first lesson of today. Second lesson is this. She's going to cheat the ball, uh, her hands down on the ball, close to her chest. She's going to compress the ball, uh, her hands against the ball, pretty hard, and she's going to notice the indentation that is made from that amount of pressure. Then she's going to try to maintain the same amount of indentation on the ball as she straightens her elbows and rolls the ball up her thighs. And she will tell you that the further the ball rolls away from her thighs, if she's going to keep the indentation the same on the ball, it's going to require more muscle action. And it does because of the length of the lever arm increased. So if she's down here, leverage is short, she'll be able to compress the ball between her hands and her thighs, put a certain indentation on the ball. As the ball rolls up her thighs, if she's going to maintain that same amount of pressure, you can see that she has some shaking in her arms because the force increases. So you can use your knowledge of lever arms in two ways. One is to control the vigor of an exercise. If you're exercising and, and you, you are being overpowered by the challenge of the exercise, 
instead of having to stop, you might say, well, perhaps I can just shorten the lever arm. And so I can continue exercising into more muscular fatigue without risking bad technique and allowing the force to get to my joints. Likewise, if you're exercising and saying, no, this is pretty darn easy, then you can simply lengthen the lever of the, the length of the lever arm so the force increases or will require you to use more muscles to accomplish the same task. Uh, more muscle work, faster progress, sounds like the game plan to us. It is similar to moving the pin up and down the weight machine. Obviously, the more weight that you're lifting, the heavier the load. With this, the longer the lever arm, heavier the load, but you can adjust it immediately by playing with the length of the lever arm so that you are challenged but safe during the exercise. You're also going to use your knowledge of lever arms in the real world in this way. The length of the lever arm when you're performing an activity of daily living is roughly the distance from your hands to your belly button. So the length of the lever arm when you're out in the real world and conducting your activities of daily living will roughly be dictated by the distance from your hands to your belly button. If you were to reach across the table in order to pick up a cup of coffee, that cup of coffee could weigh significantly on your back because of the length of the lever arm times the weight of the coffee. If I recognize that, I could simply slide the cup of coffee close to me here and pick it up and it would weigh ounces for my back. Think about the task of getting something out of the trunk of the car. You reach in the trunk of the car and you think it's not, oh, it's only 10 pounds, but it's 10 pounds times leverage. Could be enough to overpower the strength of your lumbar tissues, cause a strain to occur. So again, if you can slide the box close to you before you would accept its weight, you can cut down the risk. The same will be true if it is high and low. If I am sliding a box along a shelf here, there'll be a certain amount of danger or stress to my passive structure because of the activity. If I had the exact same box, same weight here, but sliding along a, a shelf, it would require more motor control, more thought on my part in order to keep myself safe from that tendency to extend your back than it would be if the weight was here. Same will be true side to side. If you're wiping down a kitchen counter, hand close to your belly button, a certain amount of torsion in your back will be subjected to. But as your hand goes further away, then the torsion is going to increase because of the length of the lever arm. So in all these cases, you can either recognize the added risk of what appears to be a benign activity because of the length of the lever arm involved, and then shorten the lever arm so you can perform the task safely, or if you choose to perform the task with a long lever arm, then you know you need to gonna prepare for the task before you accept the weight. So in this case, I'm gonna strengthen my muscles in my legs and my trunk. I'm gonna come here. So when I would go to wipe that, I'm gonna be prepared for the task instead of allowing the force to dissipate through my spine. If she feels the effect of leverage, compresses the ball when her hands are relatively close to her chest, feels the amount of work it takes in order to create the indentation on the ball. As the ball rolls up her thighs to keep that indentation the same, the amount of muscle work skyrockets. Going to use the knowledge to either increase the challenge of an exercise or decrease the challenge of an exercise in a split moment so that you are challenged but safe. Or if you're working and you start to fatigue, instead of having to stop, you can simply shorten the lever arms. You can work and in, in build mental and physical endurance without being overpowered by the challenge of the exercise. In the real world, you're going to use the knowledge to either create a back-friendly environment where you get everything close to your belly button in this near-reach range so that the forces are light, you don't have to be thinking, or at least recognize the added risk in what appears to be a benign activity because there's leverage involved in it. Okay? Third lesson is this. <clears throat> she puts her hands back in the middle of the ball. She's going to compress the ball between her hands and her thighs. She's going to feel, I'm going to have her bring her feet a little closer together because that will shorten the lever arm and it'll make it more possible for her. The wider feet are apart, the longer the lever arm, the more challenging it will be. So she is going to feel the pressure on both thighs. She is going to try to maintain the orientation between her thigh and her body the same. 
so that there will be no movement between her thigh and her body, but she is gonna lift one foot up, one inch off the ground by extending the knee. Uh, sorry, the, the pressure will stay the same on the ball. Yeah. So she's gonna compress the ball against her thigh. She's gonna maintain the pressure the same on the thighs. The only thing that's gonna happen is she's gonna straighten one knee so this foot comes one inch up off the floor. And she's gonna feel that there is quite a change in forces that she will need to master when she does that simple activity. When she picks her foot up, two things will happen. One is there's gonna be a skyrocketing amount of extension force that her back will be subjected to. And the other is that her pelvis is gonna to wanna to drop on the side that she put her, picked her foot up on, a rotation force. So the lesson here is this, <clears throat> if you change anything that you are doing with an exercise, if you play with any of the variables, then the challenge that you are subjected to can change completely. In this place, laying on her back, compressing the ball between her thighs, straining one knee so one foot came one inch up off the ground, and the force has changed completely. Skyrocketing amount of extension, addition of a rotation force. So once you recognize that, <clears throat> the exercises can become a game where you are gonna get yourself set up, you're gonna say, if I did this, how would the forces change? Can I anticipate that? Can I become so familiar with how my body works, I can anticipate the force, and therefore I can prepare for the force, and so therefore I can master, I can keep the force on healthy muscles so letting it get to vulnerable joint structures. So the exercise is constructive and not destructive. It's not a matter of strengthening, it's a matter of learning how to use your body in space, how to control your body in space, how to control a free object in space, and you're gonna notice that it's gonna come down to controlling compression, four directions, and these variables that we're talking about today. So with this example, she compressed the ball, she straightened the knee, skyrocketing amount of extension. If there is, the force is great enough in one direction, then the first lesson of today with most moderately vigorous force you need a co-contraction of your stomach, your butt, and your back, keep your back in that safe range. That lesson goes out the window and is bar the door, Katie, can the primary muscle group hold hard enough in order to keep myself safe? So in this case, because there's gonna be so much tendency for her pelvis roll over back to arch into extension, then she is gonna use her available range to bias to the floor as much as possible. She is gonna preset her stomach muscles so they are rock hard. She's gonna compress the ball against her thighs. When she goes to elevate that foot an inch up off the floor, she's gonna increase tone in her stomach muscles to stop her pelvis from rolling and her back from marching into extension. So a totally different strategy from a moderately vigorous force. People need to recognize when the force is moderately vigorous and they need the first strategy, co-contraction, stomach button back, keeps the back of the mid range. And when it is a holy smokes, it's a lot of force, I'm gonna bias away from the direction of force. Primary muscle group is gonna kick in like crazy. Very little need to kick in the secondary muscle group because in this case, the chances of her over flexing her back are gonna be pretty slim and none because the extension force is so great. The other thing that happened when she picked her foot up was her pelvis wanted to drop on the side that she picked her foot up on. So the addition of a rotation force. We start people training with flexion and extension forces because then the muscles work symmetrically on both sides. There's a large amount of range, easy to get the concept, easy to control. Rotation requires an asymmetrical use of your muscles and it really does take a lot of concentration, a lot of control, and your back is usually very unforgiving about rotation forces. So in this case, she's gonna compress the ball between her hands and her thighs. She is gonna anticipate that when she picks her left foot up, her left side of her pelvis is gonna wanna drop. So she's gonna figure out how to kick in her trunk muscles. So when she picks up that left foot, then her pelvis doesn't rotate and she can stop the rotation force from dissipating through her spine. She's gonna put that foot down. Then she's gonna compress the ball against her thigh. She's now gonna pick the right foot up. And she's gonna feel that there's the opposite rotation that wants to occur. So again, you change one variable, pick one foot up, pick the other foot up, the force will change completely. So she needs to become so familiar and so proactive that she can say, okay, when I go to pick the left foot up, I'm gonna have to kick in a certain amount of muscles that will stop the left side of my pelvis from dropping. She's gonna kick in those muscles. She's gonna pick that foot up. 
Oh, she's gonna put the foot down. She's gonna have to relax those muscles and prepare the muscles to stop the right side from dropping before it's gonna be safe for her to pick the right side up. So she goes back and forth while she's walking. And she will notice that there's a speed limit that she has to obey depending on how complicated the exercise is because it's gonna take time to relax one muscle group that stops, in this case, left rotation, and then prepare the muscle to stop right rotation. So one of the variables that you need to be, be aware of is speed. If you only trained in stable positions, long holds, then you would never get good at, at, at controlling force that come at you quickly. And so it is important that you train for all things that can occur in life, in this case, including quickness. And so as she is going, she's gonna say, you know, how quickly could I prepare and pick one foot up, put it down, and then, and then really do a good job of relaxing those muscles, preparing them the muscles before I pick the other foot up? Could she prepare for a quicker motion by playing with the speed component? So we've covered a handful of variables. There are only a couple more, and you'll understand the whole game. Uh, one is going to be the amount of weight that you're handling. Two is going to be the duration that you're handling it for the fatigue factor. Three is gonna be the base of support, and four is gonna be the complexity of the exercise. So, so when we look at these things, if you can do a good job of sizing up the variables, then you'll be able to play, start playing this game, and the game is gonna be, can you position your joints in the middle of their mid-range? Can you use the appropriate muscles to keep yourself safe? Can you identify where the limit is with this set of circumstances so you know that if you cross the line you'll no longer be able to keep your joints in a protected position and then you'll be able to make that choice we talked about perform the task anyway and pay the price find another way of doing it get someone else to do it or leave it alone if we can teach you that you will be in control over your destiny as far as your musculoskeletal system goes so in this case we are going to play with some variables the ball's on the ground and her belly's on the ball. So in this case, I'm gonna have her straighten her knees and have her feet spread apart. We know that when she picks her hands up, the primary force is gonna be gravity. And if gravity worked on her, then she would round over the ball, and she would, her spine would move towards flexion. So flexion will be the primary force. We know if that is the case, her back extensor is gonna be the primary support system. But in this case, it's a moderately vigorous force. There's not a lot to hold up, and so, if she picked her hands up off the ground, then many people would kick in their back extensions excessively and they would arch up like a banana and their back extensions would work too hard, unchecked by their stomach and buttocks muscles. So in this case, gravity is the primary force for flexion. So she, back extension would be the primary muscle group. It's a moderately vigorous force, so she is gonna curl her ribcage forward slightly. She's gonna tuck her tail underneath her slightly. She's gonna contract her rock hard stomach and buttocks so that her back is surrounded by a sea of muscles working instead of no muscles at all or one muscle group working excessively. In this setup, she's gonna to start to straighten her arms forward like she's superwoman flying through the air. As she does that, the lever arm will increase. As the lever arm increases, the tone in her back muscle will increase automatically. As the tone in her back muscle will increase automatically, she'll wanna arch her back more. She'll only have to have the presence of mind of keeping her tail tucked underneath her and her rib cage tight so her stomach and her buttocks are matching the increased tone in her back muscles as she moves her hands back and forth through the range. So that will be the basics. So let's see how the variables work. The variables are gonna play off one another. When one variable becomes more challenging, other variables are gonna to have to become less challenging for her to have perfect technique and no increase in symptoms, our goal. So she's gonna come forward on the ball. She's gonna have the appropriate position of her pelvis under her low back and a rib cage over her low back. Hands will be in this position. Now we're gonna narrow her base of support. She's gonna bring it so her feet and her knees are touching. When the feet and knees touch, base of support narrows. When the base of support narrows, she'll feel unstable. When you feel unstable, you want to, you're gonna to wanna to jet to the end range of your joints because you'll feel more stable, but you'll feel more stable at the expense of your joints, not our game plan. So it's gonna take more control on her part to keep the right curl of her ribcage forward and tone in her stomach and her buttocks, tail tight underneath her, so she's in her mid-range. 
Now notice what happens as she moves her hands up over her head. She will have to move more thoughtfully, slower, and she did a beautiful job, but maybe even have to move through less range in order to keep her back in this good position. So let's look. If she spreads her feet apart, wide base of support, look at what her ability to be to handle leverage, speed, and weight in this position. If she moves her hands up over her head, she could handle leverage on easily. She could move quicker, I'm sure, and still be able to keep her back in a good position. I could put weights in her hands and she would probably be able to perform the task well. If we bring her feet closer together, so her big toes and heels are touching, so the base support is very narrow, watch what happens with her ability to handle weight, leverage, and speed. So she brings her hands forward. She has to move slower. You can see that there's a wobbling occurring. She has to have more concentration in order to keep herself safe. So again, once you see how simple this is, when one variable becomes more challenging, other variables have to become less challenging for her to have perfect technique and no increase in symptoms. One variable becomes less challenging, other variables can become more challenging, and she can still keep her back in a good position. So you'll see it will turn into a giant game and then you will learn how to control your body in space, control free objects in space, read the forces, know where the limit is, make a choice, you will be in charge of your suffering. Okay, so she'll come forward again. In this case, we'll start with her big toes and heels touching, hands by her shoulders. So instead of a symmetrical force, what would happen if she started to bring her right hand out to the right? She'll notice when she does that, her tendency is gonna to be to lean her body to the left in order to compensate for the change of balance point. But of course, we don't want that to happen. We want her to use her muscles in order to control that. So she'll bring her right hand in. And then when she brings her left hand to the left, she'll need to have the opposite strategy. If she'll bring the left hand in, bring the right hand out to the side. So notice her ability to control weight, leverage, and speed here. If I had her spare her feet apart, and she did the same task. You can see that she can move much quicker. She can handle a longer lever arm, more weight in her hand. See how simple the task is, okay? If you think about this, we love these unstable circles like the gym ball because they make controlling the base of support more effective and easier and more dramatic by uh, requiring more control. So we can make the exercises very challenging for someone without having to add a lot of resistance because the resistance is gonna add more risk than the other variables. So let's just see how that game is played. If we have her lay with her back on the ground and put her heels on the ball. Okay, so she's gonna start out with her heels on the near corner of the ball. And it seems like everybody understands what the near corner of the ball is. <laughs> everybody seems like they get it, okay? So she's gonna notice <clears throat> that if she strains her knees at the same time and rolls the ball away from her, there won't be much tendency, there won't be much tendency for her back to arch into extension if you strain your knees all the way, but there'll be some. And you can see that if she didn't have the ball holding up her feet, the lever arm would be long and the tendency for extension would be great. So if she does that, then she would tighten up her stomach flatten her back to the ground, stop the extension from occurring. As she would roll the ball towards her chest, uh, her bottom, and her knees come towards her chest, at some point her bottom's gonna wanna tuck underneath her, her back will wanna flatten the ground, flexion, so then she would increase tone in her back muscles, glue her tailbone to the ground, <clears throat> and prevent flexion from occurring. So as she would roll the ball back and forth, she, we're gonna see if she would have the control and the, to have the timing of as extension force became the danger to flatten her back, tighten her stomach and her buttocks. When she rolled the ball to her, decreased tone in her stomach and her buttocks, started to increase tone in her back muscle, poke her tailbone into the floor. As she rolls back and forth, she's gonna have a change in force here. When she brings her knees to her chest, she wants to think about squatting down to pick something up, stopping flexion from occurring. As the ball rolls away from her, she wants to pitch herself, bring her hands up over her head, tightening her stomach and her buttocks in order to stop extension from occurring as she goes. So you can notice in this position, easy, but look at it, wide base of support, no lever arm because her feet are on the ball. 
easy to do, but a nice position to start training people to have the timing of adjusting their position, their muscle tone to keep themselves safe. But of course, that can't be the end of the game. So let's add three variables and see what happens to her ability to control her position space as the force changes from flexion to extension. So the three forces will be this. We're gonna narrow her base of support, we're gonna add a weight, and we're gonna increase leverage. So she's gonna bend her knees here. She's gonna have her hands on the ground about eight inches outside of her hips. She's gonna put her back in the mid range for flexion extension. She's gonna dig her heels in the ball and pick her low back and buttocks up off the ground. So as she does, narrow the base of support, increase the weight, increase lever leverage. You can see that she's wobbling a little bit already. So she's gonna push down on the floor, take advantage of, of her wider base of support from above, trying to control the force. Now as she rolls the ball away from her, it's gonna take more thought and more control on her part to stop the extension from occurring. If she rolls the ball towards her, it's gonna take more thought and more control in order to poke her tailbone towards the floor, increase shoulder back muscles. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. And then when she rolls the ball away, she's gonna tuck her tail underneath her, tighten her stomach and her buttocks. When she rolls the ball towards her, she's gonna poke her tailbone towards the floor, increase shoulder back muscles, stop flexion from occurring. So again, as she's rolling the ball towards her, she thinks about squatting down and picks them up, rolls the ball away, okay? And she's doing pretty well. So we'll need to make it a little harder. So then if you think about it, we can narrow the base support further by leaving her elbows on the ground but picking her hands up. So I'll have her start here, get in the starting position so her bottom's up, and now she'll leave her elbows on the ground and she'll pick her hands up and now she'll roll the ball back and forth and we'll see what happens with her ability to handle weight, leverage, and speed and still have the presence of mind of controlling the position between her thigh, pelvis, and back in order to keep herself safe. So she's doing pretty well, but you see how she had to slow down. You can see that she's concentrating harder in order to master the task. If we compare it to the very first, if her bottom's on the ground, hands here, she rolls the ball back and forth. You can see that it doesn't take much effort on her part in order to control the position and the timing, okay? But of course, she's a young lass and we need to get her prepared for life. So she's gonna pick her tail up. She's gonna pick her hands up. And then because she's so good, we're gonna have her pick her elbows up. And now she's gonna see if she can have the presence of mind to straighten and bend the knees. Oh, come on, no wobbling. And so you're gonna see that no matter how good someone is, we can make it harder by playing with these variables. And no matter how bad they're starting, we can make it possible for them to exercise safely by controlling these variables, okay? There's nothing else that you need to know, okay? So let's put her back so that her uh, stomach is on the ball. So you're gonna notice that the theme with the last exercise and in this exercise is gonna be the changing force from flexion to extension. So in this case, she picks her hands up off the ground, and now she bends her knees and she rolls her body back on the ball. She'll have to spread her knees apart, but you notice what a good job she's doing, her poking her tail went up and there, increased tone her back muscles, stop the flexion from occurring. As she comes forward, straightens her knees forward. As her pelvis comes on the ball, she'll have to tuck her tail underneath her, tighten her stomach and her buttocks, stop extension from occurring. So we could have her practice the same timing now moving her body in space instead of moving her legs, if you can move back and forth, okay? Good. And as she goes back, she's practicing squatting in a non weight bearing position. When she comes forward, she's practicing carrying an object across the room, working the hands above her head. Same as she did when her back was on the ground and her heels on the ball. But now instead of moving her legs off with a fixed body, she's moving her body in space fix the floor with her heels. You with me? So again, every time you change the pattern, causes them to think, causes them to register, the idea is that they get so familiar that they can master these tasks, no matter how, the, how it comes at them in the real world, okay? So if we now put her in the recline chair position on the ball, we'll think, okay, well, what are the variables here? Well, the variables in this case will be the base of support. We'll leave her feet spread apart to start with. We'll say that the leverage is gonna be how high she's up to the ball, uh, up off the ball. So as she starts to walk towards the ball, the more of her head and shoulders that come up off the ball, 
the, the, adds more weight and more leverage. And you can see that she's got a little shake going already. <laughs> and we haven't even got started. <laughs> but it's the way that the game is played. So let's just say that she's up that high and it was too much force. She'll say, look, the idea is that I train safely, prepare for tomorrow, do it over and over again so I get the remolly I need in order to be more fit, more, more stable as time goes on. So we will have her choose a lever on that's gonna be appropriate for her. In this position, the basic rule will be that the tip of the shoulder blades cannot rest on the ball. We know that gravity is the primary force. So if she let her summit muscles go, she would fall back into extension. So we know that she's gonna master that by curling her rib cage forward and tucking her tail underneath her appropriately. We can play with the variables. Now we have her set up. Play with some simple variables. When she can bring this hand towards the ceiling. With this base of support, this is not a lever arch. Now she can play with either bringing her hand out to the side, adding a asymmetric force so her obliques need to kick in strongly in order to keep her stable, or she can bring her hand straight back up over her head, adding length to the lever arm, so that without any movement of her trunk, she can train her trunk muscles hard. I can tell you that her stomach is shaking in this position as she goes. If we needed to make it harder, she could simply cheat herself up the ball. Every half inch she goes up the ball, the weight in increases because she's holding up more of her body. Come down here, rest. She's holding up more of her body. Uh, and the lever arm increased. We could put a small weight in her hand. We could have her pull against the stick. We could have her pull on an elastic cord and make this exercise unbelievably challenging by simply having a small weight at the end of a long lever arm when she's in this position. And then if she comes up again and now brings her feet and knees close together so that they are touching, then she will tell you, can you go up just a hair higher? That as she brings that hand up overhead, even bringing her hand up overhead requires more control because you can see how she wants to wobble. So the amount of control she needs in order to accomplish this task is greater than when her feet were spread apart because the base of support was wider. Okay, there over here, wider with the feet spread apart. You'll notice when she brings her hand outside, she wants to roll the ball towards me, but that's not the game. The game is she's perfectly stable in space. She can tell it is taking a ton of concentration and a ton of muscles in order to accomplish the task. So again, if she was capable, then you'd make it harder by adding weight, adding speed, uh, adding uh, uh, asymmetrical force, one arm moves, other arm moves, so she has to play with the speed game about the changing force, how long she needs to gather herself before she adds a new force. We can have her come up, we can narrow the base of support further by having her pick one foot up off the floor. Let's have her put both hands behind her neck. Okay, she's gonna keep this position, she's gonna see if she can walk in place. And if she does, it'll be nicely done. And she's gonna try not to wobble at all, not to let herself shift on the ball. So again, partial weight bearing. Possible to control the position as she goes. She could leave both feet on the ground, wider base of support, and she could just roll on the ball. She could come down here and, and take a little bit of a break. She could straighten both knees at the same time, add leverage, increases the, the amount of force. So she could, the game is almost endless as she goes. She could be so clever that she would have both hands behind her neck, and come up here so her stomach is working modestly. And then she can say, I have so much bias and so much control, I can let my shoulders fall back a little bit, but not so much my back exceeds my tolerance for extension. And then she can curl forward, so she do little sit-ups in this position. So moving her, her thoracic cage on the fixed low back in this position. You with me? Okay? So then she can say, well, maybe I should give my stomach muscles a break and she can come down into the bridging position. She's gonna bring her bottom up and say, we'll start in the finished position. When you're gonna do the bridging, we would like to have it so that the head and neck are maintained in a nice position also. So she wants to have it so the weight of her body is taken by the top of her thrust cage and her shoulders, not just on her neck and her head, so there's not that shearing action. The primary motion is going to be your pelvis is going to go straight down and straight up. 
So again, she's going to learn to move at a large stable joint in her hips while she's going to control between her back and her pelvis. So you can see that she's brought her pelvis probably a little bit too high and her back is arched into some extension. When her bottom comes up, extension becomes a danger. So as she comes up, she's gonna tuck her tail underneath her. Can you tuck this way? Thank you. And she's gonna really tighten her buttocks muscles like crazy, tighten her stomach muscles as much as she can. When her bottom drifts towards the floor, the danger becomes flexion. So now she's gonna lead up with her tailbone on the way down and increase tone in her back muscles. Okay. As she comes up, she's gonna find the right time of when to tuck her tail underneath her, tighten her stomach and her buttocks, respect the limits so she doesn't come up so high her back has to arch into extension. We're hoping to get a straight line from the knees to the shoulders, but if her hips are tight enough that she can't accomplish that without the back, her back arching into extension, she only moves through the range she can and keep her back joints in the mid range. So again, if she goes down, she's thinking about squatting down and pick up, up a box. If she comes up, she's thinking about carrying the box across the room, Work with the hands above her head. She wants a primary force, her pelvis going up and down, so she's gonna roll the ball a little bit less. And so her bottom comes up. But she wants to roll the ball just enough that her head and neck stay in an okay position. If the ball didn't roll at all and she brought her pelvis to the ground, her neck would kink into extension, and we don't want that to happen. So again, her primary force is gonna be bottom straight up and straight down. She'll have the timing of rolling the ball just enough to keep her head and neck in a good position. So roll the ball a little bit quicker if you could. Yeah, okay. So it's okay, yeah. they support, that's good. What does she bring her knees together? Brings her feet and knees together. Base support narrows, she's gonna take more control to stop the wobble. You'll notice that she might not be able to move through quite as much range in this combination of positions, but her job is to say, Okay, I understand the game is to keep my joints in mid-range position, my spinal joints in mid-range positions, move like crazy between my hips and my knees, larger, more stable joints. So can I have the presence of mind in this less stable position, because the narrow base of support, in order to stop extension at the top, stop flexioning at the bottom. If she's doing well like she is, then she can take one hand and she can put it on the floor for balance. And then she's going to take her other hand, she's going to hold the opposite knee to her chest. When she holds the opposite knee to her chest, her back will get some protection against extension because she's locked in the thigh torso angle here. And no matter how hard she presses towards the ceiling, it'll be hard for her back to arch into extension as long as she doesn't let that knee come away from her. But she can tell you if she brings her bottom up, it is more than twice as hard on the side where the foot is connected to the ground. So she's gonna see, can she have the presence of mind to go up and down, she's doing a beautiful job. Keep her pelvis level, she stop her rotation because now there's an asymmetrical force. She can tell you that her right leg is working pretty darn hard, right buttocks is working pretty darn hard in order to produce some movement. This, look, look what a beautiful job she's doing to keep herself safe. She's doing such a good job, then we should make it a little bit harder. So she, get, she wants to switch legs. <laughs> So we'll let her switch legs, <laughs> okay? And then if she goes here, then we'll say, what would happen if she got, so she just had one finger touching the ground here. We're narrowing her base of support, so it's gonna take more control on her part. But see how she's wobbling. She's getting over challenged. She's, we're getting to the, her breaking point, so we would have her go back to the level where she was safe, but you can see that the, the next step would be, of course, to pick the left hand up off the ground altogether and see if she would have the presence of mind and the control in order to move and keep herself safe. If we think about turning that into function if she comes up to standing. So again, if you think about how this is, all these exercises are gonna to pertain to function, then we can have her squatting down. If she squats down, we know that flexion is a danger, so she's gonna move her knees and her hips just like she did in a series of those previous exercises, stomach on the ball, or ball back and forth, Heels on the ball, uh, reclining chair position, rolling up and down, where she was controlling between her uh, pelvis, back, torso, moving like crazy between her knees and her hips. So when she comes down, as if she's gonna squat down, and she's gonna pick some up, and then she's gonna come up to standing. 
If we finish this off and they have her bring her hands to her shoulders, then act as if she's gonna press that box up to a shelf. You see the extension becomes, extension becomes a danger. So she's gonna tuck her tail underneath her, bring her rib cage and pelvis closer in the front, tighten over rock hard stomach and buttocks. As she brings her hands down, she's slowly gonna decrease tone in her stomach and her buttocks. She's gonna start to reach down to the floor as if she's gonna pick some up. She's gonna increase some of her back muscles, soft flexion from her current. You can see she went a little bit too far. You see she went down, her bottom rolls. So she's gonna have to say, uh, if I go 80% of that, I can do it over a lifetime and keep myself safe. If I allow my bottom to roll, then there will be some excessive, there'll be some extra stress that will waterfall into my low back structures. If there's enough tolerance in the tissue to allow that to happen, there's not a problem. But if the structure is vulnerable, if the structure is worn out, and you do that enough, if you exceed the strength and the remodeling capacity of the tissue, you will end up with a net loss and you'll end up in trouble. So as long as people know what the game is, they can make a choice about how they're gonna play it. And again, you can see that as she moves through the range, one more time, then she will, if the, the function comes up overhead, pertains to the exercises because of the common denominator of direction of force, the game's always the same, what's the direction, what's the strategy for keeping your back in the mid-range, what muscles do you to keep it safe, where's the limit, has it tied to like activities, what choice will I make, do it and pay the price, find another way, get someone else to do it, leave it alone, you will be in control of what happens. If we turn her to the camera, and she comes into that asymmetrical squat, so let's have her put her stronger leg down and weaker leg back to the side. Oh, you're gonna stay standing, sorry. She's gonna, yeah, one, the stronger leg straight, yeah, good. And then, like that? Well, yeah, you're just gonna stand, then you're gonna go down. Okay. okay? Uh, her goal is to keep her pelvis level and not to let flexion from occur. So if she goes down, she'll allow her back heel to come up, but she's gonna have to concentrate on keeping, she's gonna, oh, she did a pretty good job, but then she's gonna loss at the bottom. So again, we would allow her to go through 80% of the range that she could move through, and then come back up, and we would train her here today, knowing that as she trained, she will gain strength, endurance, flexibility, understanding, and then she could, we allow her to come lower. As we said in the last film, if she understands what her functional limits are, then she can either create a back-friendly environment where everything in her life is within that range, or she can train in order to move through additional ranges that she can't control at the moment in order to maintain her good position as she did. But at least if she understands what the game is, she will be in control, that is our goal.